But uh, let's bring in Scott Bauer, CEO of Prosper Trading Academy, because I want to talk currencies and treasuries. Scott, good morning to you. Good morning, in a, good morning. A week that's dominated by central bank policy decisions, right? Uh, still, uh, you've got the uh, ECB to come. You've got uh, the Bank of Canada as well. Do you still feel like uh, Europe's going to be first to go? Absolutely, though. There's a little pressure uh, from Canada right now. Yeah. The rumblings that I hear are... And, and they're, are they they're made... tomorrow before the ECB on Thursday. A exactly. That's right. So that's tomorrow, ECB they're first Thursday. first in line. So so we'll we'll see. I'm uh you know I, I've been I've been saying for a long time it's going to be ECB well, if they I guess wind you didn't up being second. Look at second. the schedule necessarily, exactly. right? You didn't see that the BOC was on two Wednesday and the ECB came on Thursday. It, exactly. Regardless, though, um, you know when we look at the dollar compared to other currencies here, the dollar, in my estimation, has been holding up really well because of weakness in other parts of the world. Yeah. The number we got yesterday, though. All of a sudden now, the narrative hmm. maybe has shifted a little hmm. bit here. Um, you know, the manufacturing data that it's weaker. All of a sudden now, now, now the the weaker data, the the good news is bad news, bad news is good news scenario is kind of back in play here, it seems. Yeah, I'm not sure if you heard uh, my conversation with Kevin a minute ago, but he brought that into the discussion, basically the yep. whole idea that if stock starts to sell off, if we get that traditional safe haven to treasuries, ultimately, then people are going to be buying bonds and we'll see yields come off. The dollar ultimately could come off, but that may not necessarily be a reflection or in this instance, a good thing. No, there's no doubt about it. I, you know, it's, it, it could be that it's an acceptance that, yes, we are finally slowing down, which, you know, it's it's almost, the uh, you know, be careful what you wish for <laughs> sort of scenario. Yeah. Um, you know, I know it's what the Fed want, yeah. but the market, at least right now, doesn't seem to like that. I haven't seen much of a change in in what the CME Fed Watch tool is looking at in terms of what the Fed may do in September. I mean, an uptick just a little right. bit in terms of, of probability of lowering rates. Uh, but, you know, the jolt number today and then obviously jobs on Friday, like you guys were talking about, that's going to be a big one. And we'll have to see if we do get lighter than expected numbers, is the mm. market going to mm. like it like yeah. they would have over the last couple months? Or are they going to look at that and say, oh, you know, we're really starting to slow down we get things to worry about now yeah i feel like a complicated a very complex environment when you come to the end of the road of that good is a uh, bad is good yeah. good is bad kind of you know scenario because when things shift ultimately there's a quite a reckoning to be had and kind of to your point in terms of careful what you wish for it sort of makes me think back to when the fed was wishing we had inflation you know they couldn't they couldn't muster up inflation then the pandemic came around and while nobody would have wished for that obviously uh you know you see the impact that it had on the economy and inflation as well uh, uh just Talk to us a little bit about some of these other currencies that factor into this discussion right now. I mean, the yen's actually been rallying over the last couple of days, yep. so kind of weighing on the dollar. But, you know, it got right back to that uh, BOJ intervention point where there was some uncertainty in terms of what was going to come next there. It has firmed since. So maybe we've kind of walked off that cliff a little bit. But definitely, if you're trading uh, the dollar, if you're looking at these uh, financial products, I mean, you've got to be focused on the yen as well. Oh, there's no question about it. And there's some volatility out yeah. there, whether it's the yen, the euro. Uh, whatever it might be, but it, it's it's actually to me pretty phenomenal for the yen that that it did make that rally back. You know, uh, we looks like we just lost Scott here, but we were talking about some of those uh, moves and currencies. This is a great chart to pull up here to kind of get into that. I wanted to just take a look here at the Mexican peso. Not a product that we talk about on a regular basis here on the Future Show, but. Definitely one that kind of feeds into that where, as Scott was pointing to, some of that intraday volatility that we've seen, these are all influential play and factor into uh, the influence or uh, factor into some of the price activity that we see in the U.S. dollar. So, again, just uh, taking a quick look here at uh, the Mexican peso. And, hey, real quick, here's the British pound. This one hasn't gotten a lot of attention either as well. But, but, but again, kind of skipping beyond the pound, this is the yen. Oops, hold on. I thought that was the yen at the end there. Scott's coming back here. Scott, finish that thought for us in terms of uh, uh, the yen and some of the volatility we've seen, the influence it has on the dollar. Yeah, I, I was very surprised that the yen did make its, you know, way back from from that intervention point, if you will. And, and you know, if you look across currencies, you can see the volatility there versus the dollar. And a as we've spoken about for a while, Ben, the dollar has hung in there because of weakness in other currencies mm -hmm. and other mm -hmm. central banks, other parts of the world. And now we're seeing that dollar actually overnight 
it ticked just below 104. I think it printed 103.99. That is the lower end of this range we have been in. If it continues to weaken at all, which it may happen if we get some soft numbers here, uh, 102, 102 and a half could be in play. Take a real quick look here at the chart. I just want to provide a visual in terms of backing up what Scott just pointed to. You do have the futures, which got down to 103.93 half here, Scott, in the overnight session. We're just above that by about, let's see, 25 ticks here right now, 104.18. But I just wanted to show you where we are. Bigger picture in terms of the daily candle chart, you can see. So going from that five minutes, some of the selling we've seen on this more intraday basis recently off this 106, 107 handle. Here you can see still kind of in the middle of this range. But I always say, Scott, work your way through the middle of the range here with uh, energy conviction. Ultimately, open up a door for a retest of that lower extreme. So lots yep. to watch here as we head into the data. Some of this might ultimately, as you pointed to, weaken our dollar come to fruition here. Scott, appreciate you joining us. And we're going to follow up with you on that uh, ECB call. That's for sure. We'll see. Uh, a bit of a, a jockeying for position in terms of who comes first, BOC this week and the ECB, Bank of Canada and uh, the European Central Bank. Okay.